Hi everyone! Let's get some more information on Olympic Games and sports in general. <laughs> About uh, two videos ago, I spoke of this relationship that the IOC has with the inter international federations. So I made a li this little joke that you have this uh, house, I have the house, I'm the host, but you are coming to my party and you bring in the food. That's a little bit how they work. Um, they will be the ones coordinating the sports and telling how each sport should be uh, actually either graded or played or they will bring the rules of each sport. But then for a party, you also need the guests to eat all this amazing food. And in that case, we're talking, of course, about the athletes. So who brings the athletes to the games? Is it the IOC? Well, actually, no. In a way, again, they are the hosts and they're inviting everyone to come to this huge party, but they are not the ones bringing them. Who is bringing them? It's each individual National Olympic Committee, what we call NOCs. So these NOCs, they represent a nation. And as I said before in my opening games uh, video, uh, the nation in the way that is recognized by the IOC, which might be different on a political way that they might be recognized. But I explained that in my other video, so I will not go into that again. Uh, what I will say is that more often than not, these are actually uh, either very connected to the government, if not part of the government, meaning, for example, a ministry of sports or something of this sort. So they are this normally independent body, but that has the support and financials of the government, as well as support and financials from the Solidarity Program, from the IOC as well. So it's kind of a little triangle all the time. And then these uh, National Olympic Committees, they will also normally be the supervisors, if I can say this word, of the national federations of each sport. So for example, uh, the Handball Federation of Brazil, the National Handball Federation of Brazil, will speak to with the International Handball Federation, but they will also uh, connect with the National Olympic Committee of Brazil to you know, kind of, uh, let's say there is a report, report of what's going on with their athletes and with their finances and etc. Of course, this will vary country by country. First of all, because we have countries like USA and Russia and Canada and China, which have great, great, great number of athletes playing for the Olympic Games. Uh, and in fact, in population, and you will have like all these small islands with um, much smaller populations um, that will also have the same system that might work in a different way just because of the size of the country. Correct? So that's one thing. Uh, what I wanted to say, I also spoke in a video about the uniforms and etc. And what I try to mean by that is that it's not only the uniform, but they are also responsible to form this delegation. So once they're coming to the games, there are many people that may join this whole delegation that are not only the athletes, right? So we might take a masseur with us. We might take a nutritionist with us. We may take a um, physiotherapist with us. We might take translators with us. I also wanted to speak a little bit about volunteers and I said, um, I think I said in my volunteer video that sometimes uh, there are volunteers that will do that. You have volunteers for almost everything in the games and you would also have translate, translation volunteers and etc. But what I'm saying is that the committee, the National Olympic Committee of each nation will form a delegation and will require accreditation for this whole group of people that are the entourage of all these athletes. And these, of course, may be on this national level. So, for example, we might be taking a um, nutritionist 
for the whole uh, Canadian team. Or this may be also something that as, uh, maybe a smaller uh, national federation needs cer certain type of uh, support. Uh, where, whereas, I don't know, a big federation of uh, another sport for the same nation uh, doesn't require. Uh, so this is, this is the internal conversation exactly that I want to say that will be happening in the National Olympic Committee level. And they are the ones that will be traveling and then will be granted space within the Olympic Village. And I do have a plan to do a video just about the Olympic Village. Um, and they will form the team. And also, they might take some people that might not even be in the village at all, but they might be support external uh, because they might be doing extra transport for my team or they might be doing, um, uh, for example, now in the surf because it's a completely different city. Uh, we may have a base closer to the beach just of my National Olympic uh, Committee. So these are the decisions that each NOC will take. Something else that I wanted to say about the games that has been changing a lot and has been growing a lot is that each National Olympic Committee uh, lately, they are starting to do houses. So this started from the Olympics that I have been a part with. This started small and it's been growing more and more. Um, so when I was in Athens 2004, there was already the Holland House, there was already a few houses um, representing that nation, so for example, the Holland House, um, and they would be open for people to go and buy the Dutch uniform and to sometimes see even the medalists. Um, it is a way of each nation to showcase their athletes, of course, but also their country, because I will stress that point because it's what I truly, truly believe. The Olympic Games, it's not only about sport. It's about this whole cultural stirring pot that puts together all these different nations and all these different cultures together. And that is a little bit the point. So we do have, um, we do have this effort uh, from some governments and or some NOCs, National Olympic Committees, to put together these houses and as an observer and as a fan of the games, from the games that I have been a part of, we can see that this has been growing more and more and more and more. Um, and these houses, they are normally in a completely um, non-sporting venue. So for example, in London 2012, they would be right in the middle of the city, meaning that me as a fan, if for example, which happens a lot, uh, I don't have a ticket for that day, but I'll be that whole week in London to see the games, but I have only one ticket for Monday and Wednesday. On Tuesday, I have a free day. I'll be walking around town and I can go visit those houses. So I personally think this is an amazing initiative because you can really see that each house or each country does a little bit what they want. A lot of the times they will talk about sport, but they can also talk about their sustainability plans for their team. Uh, they will more often than not be selling the licensing products, which is super nice because you can cheer and participate to actually with whichever nation you want. Uh, particularly, I'm a big fan of, of that kind of mood. Um, so that's pretty nice. and. These, within this framework, there's also activations. So they could do a little game on some sports or they could do a big screen for a certain sport because they are really good and they'll be getting a medal. Um, for example, in Sochi, where I got to see the Canada House a lot, they were always bringing the medalists to talk a little bit with the guests of the Canada House. Um, the Holland House is always a big party house because of the Dutch and they are sponsored by Heineken, uh, which is another thing. They can bring their own national sponsors instead of having the Olympic sponsors because they are in a non-Olympic space. Um, the Swiss house is really, really nice. You can normally eat different types of Swiss food. They always try to bring even um, Swiss designers to, to do some parts of the house. Uh, of course, the Brazilian house is super nice. 
it is always super nice to visit the house of the following games. So, for example, now if we were in Tokyo, we could probably visit the Paris 2024 or the Friends house, which would showcase the Paris 2024. Um, even uh, Qatar in Rio, they were already had a space. And even though it's not Olympic Games, is the World Cup, they had a little sample of what the stadiums of the World Cup are going to be. Uh, so it's super fun. It's not every house. If you plan to be a fan of the uh, a, a real tourist and visit the games uh, for the next edition, uh, do know that the rules they make. So they could make a rule that they have preferential uh, passes for the nationals. So if I can only get into the Holland house if I'm Dutch or something like this, um, or it could be. It, it's really up to their terms. Um, but it's a definite, it's a definite for your list to put in to visit the houses when you are visiting an Olympic game. So I think that's a little bit the panorama on National Olympic Committees. Um, of course, they are there, number one, to take their delegation. And I would say as a number two, uh, to get the most medals possible, of course, because they want to prove that they have been investing in sports. That's what they do all year long, all Olympiad, long Olympiad being the space of four years in between each edition of the games. So that's their aim. Uh, that's why it's exciting to follow a few of the Instagrams like of the Swiss team or of, in fact, any team, the Belgian team, they have a very good Instagram as well. Um, my point being, that's, a little bit the triangle of the games. This is um, a little bit of the panorama of National Olympic Committees. And all I can say is that I wish the best for all of them. I wish all National Olympic Committees could take, uh, could take medals home. And uh, that's why we keep watching the games, right? To see who else is going to win this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying and keep giving me your feedback.